My name is Jennifer Guthrie. My name is Shannon Nickel. I'm a landscape architect. And I'm a landscape architect. We are in Seattle, Washington in a firm called Gustafs and Guthrie Nickel. Architecture is a building and it's pretty easy to understand that where you build, you know, four walls and a roof and it's a contained thing. Landscape's huge. Landscape's everything outside of that. Landscape architects do a lot of different things. In this office, we design plazas, parks, gardens. Public places, a park within a city. Anything that has that kind of urban flavor is really what we specialize in. We received a fax from the city of Chicago. 20 other firms received the fax as well, and it was an invitation to participate in a design competition. Two parts of the project interested us. One was the client's desire to have a park and a botanical garden that was absolutely unique to Chicago that you'd find nowhere else in the world. We spent a lot of time designing the garden. Um, we did a lot of research, historical research. The starting point is to learn about the site and the city that we're working in. The city of Chicago, one of its nicknames is the city of broad shoulders because of the fur trappers that went through, the canoers, and they had big, strong shoulders. Somehow we wanted to be able to turn that into design. How do you take broad shoulders and turn it into design? The second part of the project that was interesting to us is that it needed to be able to accommodate up to 10,000 people at a time exiting through the garden after they'd seen a concert at the band shell space that's just to the north. Combining great crowds of people who have just seen a concert with botanical gardens is not something that is normally done, and we thought the challenge of that was really interesting. We were among internationally known landscape architects, people that I had learned about and studied about when I was in school, people that I admired so much, and here we were in the same group of them pursuing this one project. We put in a tremendous amount of work starting out, drawing the basic shapes, figuring out how do people move through this site. We had to build a model, we did an interview. The client narrowed the list down to three firms and we had to refine our design even farther. We really started looking at what plant material can we use, what's really hardy, what's going to stand up to people kicking it, what's going to stand up to Chicago's winners. We spent a lot of time designing the garden. We did one illustration for each season. Colors change and patterns change over the course of this landscape. Then we just got down to the detail of looking at each path. You need to define whether there's stone or concrete or wood or gravel. What type of texture should you have next to you and what are the right plants? It really takes an imagination. After that second presentation, we were unanimously selected to do the project. And that in itself was an honor. Our first design move was to decide on how can we break this down into a series of familiar and simple arcs or forms or lines. We started out with this very simple shape. That's usually where we start is the simplest form possible. We have these linear paths that have 90 degree angles. It's very classic. We decided here to keep this symmetrical outside shape where we have an arc and an arc. We thought we needed a little more variety and chances to walk through the site. We said, let's incorporate some angles. So the next move we made was a wooden boardwalk that moves diagonally through the site and it becomes a much more interesting surface to walk along. Composition is really important, understanding really how shapes relate to each other. You really have to think about how people use space. We worked very hard on defining the geometry of those pathways to make people feel like the path was shorter. One of the things that we like to do is take what would normally be a straight line and slightly arc it. This line 
looks like it's straight from a distance, but it's actually very slightly arced. If you are standing at the north end of that flared walkway, you actually don't see the lines going farther apart like they look in plan. They actually look like they're perfectly parallel. It's a very different view from one end of it than it is from the other end of it, and your orientation to where you are in that symmetrical object is always changing. And that to us is what makes a landscape interesting to walk through. When you design a landscape, you need to think about how your space changes as you move through it. You have to think in three dimensions when you're designing. Geometry is one of the most powerful languages that we have available to us. Geometry is the backbone of design and really strong ideas that you can explain in words and you can show in drawings. If you can clearly communicate that to someone, then you have a successful design. You know, it's fun to think about the purpose of something and then figure out a design that suits that. The profession itself is very vast, and there's a lot of opportunities for a lot of different types of landscape architecture. It's very exciting to go see the projects that we've designed once they're constructed. Every single time, I'm blown away that the thing that you've drawn is really there in real life. It's very rewarding. This is the site plan in spring, so you can see the kind of the vibrancy of colors. If you go to Chicago, to the Lurie Garden, in the spring, you'll just see this river of purple that moves right through. The and then it fades right away there. and you don't see it again until the next year. That's right. One of the most significant challenges was that we were creating a landscape over the top of the parking garage. And that structure was still being built. It wasn't completed yet.